During the Second World War and Hitler's time in power, there was an execution device used in many prisons across Germany that took the lives of many people who defied the Nazi regime. Prisons across the nation were filled with many resistors and people who actively opposed the evil regime, and many faced their deaths because of this. To defy Hitler was a dangerous thing, and those who did not agree with the ideas and beliefs often found themselves underneath an execution device which had roots in the French Revolution. The guillotine was a device that executed the French king and also his wife during the French Revolution, and it's today seen as a symbol of liberty, fraternity and equality. But this was completely the opposite of the Third Reich's ideas and policies, but the guillotine was used in the land as an efficient way of executing criminals. It was exported from France and had been used for decades before the Second World War, and it had a different name, the Fallbile. Join us today as we look at the horror of Hitler's guillotine execution machine, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Guillotines and execution or beheading devices have had a long history that date back for centuries before the French Revolution. In England there was a device used during the medieval times known as the Halifax gibbet, which was a wooden structure and scaffold that utilised a falling axe blade to take the lives of a condemned person. The gibbet had a few issues, including that it relied on the condemned being held under the device by a number of trusted people. There were accounts of people that as the blade was released, breaking free and actually escaping execution as they were not caught and fled the town, and then could not be brought back to face their death sentence. But the guillotine was eventually used in Germany by many of the German states, and they also at the time used execution by hand axe, and some executioners used an axe to take the lives of someone like they used to in the medieval and Tudor times. This was rather unreliable, and often blundering axemen were forced to take several swings of the axe, prolonging someone's death. This even happened during Hitler's lifetime, and he eventually outlawed beheading by axe. But following the French Revolution, the guillotine as an execution machine was used in many other countries, including its neighbours, and despite the terror causing chaos in France, executing thousands on the device, Germany used it. Many German states, as mentioned, adopted the device to condemn criminals, as it was seen as efficient, easy and quick to do so. The German guillotine was called the Faubile or the Drop Axe, and it was different to a guillotine in a number of ways. Different devices were used across the land, but there were many changes to the mostly wooden structure. Some early Faubiles were the same as the early French devices, but over the following centuries, most of them were made from metal and were considered harder standing, and some were a lot smaller too. The Hamburg Fallbeil was used from 1856 to 1933, and this specific device had a blade and release mechanism that was different to guillotines. Also on the scaffold, there was a hole on it, or a trap door and a hatch, that following execution would allow the body of the condemned to then drop into a coffin or a room below, where they were then placed into the coffin and were then taken away. This was all protected by a wooden shed-like structure that gave the authorities privacy to dispose of the body. This foul buyer was also inside Hamburg prison, so the device was not used in public and was sheltered from the view of the everyday person. When the Nazis came into power, these machines were put into overdrive, with many of those who spoke out against the regime executed. One of the most prominent resistors to the Nazis was Sophie Scholl, who along with her brother were part of the White Rose movement. This group were focused on intellectually questioning people to not conform to the Nazi ideas and their policies, and the White Rose made leaflets which were then distributed across many German cities. Sophie and Hans, the brother and sister combination, who distributed the leaflets, were eventually turned over to the Gestapo, who placed them on trial for treason, and the pair were then sentenced to death. The Faubar became their instrument of death, as they met the executioner Johann Reichart, who was considered a master of the Faubile. He went on to execute 3,000 people during Hitler's time in power, and these were mostly resistors but Sophie was described by Reichart as the bravest person he ever had to execute, and Sophie Scholl is considered a martyr by many across Germany today. The foul bar used to execute her was believed to have been missing for centuries, but allegedly it could have recently appeared in a collection inside a Bavarian museum. Another lady who was executed by the foul bar was Greta Bayer, who in 1908 met her end on the beheading machine. Despite this being before Hitler's time in power, she was a woman who was found guilty of poisoning her fiancé and also shooting him. It seems she was forced to marry him, but she didn't really love him, and she decided that killing him was the easiest way out of the relationship, which is bizarre. 
At the age of 22, she was beheaded by foul bile, and this specific device had large and tall posts, and there was no place for her body to be placed inside of, and then it had to be packed inside of a coffin by hand. But many executioners such as Moritz Brand, who performed this killing, were considered masters of their craft, and they were smartly dressed when they performed the killings. They would be kitted out in their finest black suits, and also often wore large top hats. Throughout the years, the role of the executioner remained the same, but the foul bar did change in its design. Many of them had wooden head baskets, which were used to collect and catch the head after the blade fell, and many structures had baskets filled with sand and sawdust underneath the blade to collect the blood of the victim. Some even had pipes that connected them to sewage systems or drainage systems, so that the blood would be taken quickly away. As mentioned, many were compact and made from metal, and could be collapsed and brought to other prisons and sites around Nazi Germany. Often executioners trialled different methods of making the killing process quicker, and they sometimes used a metal gliding frame, which kept the blade straight, and made it fall through the guillotine quicker, so it would hit the victim at a faster velocity, improving reliability. Also, the blade was very heavy. When the prisoner was locked into place, the sharpness of it would easily slice through the victim. There were also quick ways of preparing the victim before death, including when they were brought into the room, and were secured to a metal or wooden board. They were tied to this, and sometimes would step on a footrest, before they were strapped with belts to the board. After this, the board was then quickly slid and locked into place, below the blade, and quickly the signal to pull the lever, which would release the blade, was given. This meant that executions sometimes took seconds, and someone could be dead within 10 seconds that they entered the execution chamber. The Nazis kept stringent records on these, and many of them have survived the war, and quick executions of around 7 seconds from when someone came into the execution chamber to when the blade fell, did occur. A bell would ring throughout the execution signalling what was happening, and curtains were also found that granted privacy to the condemned, and also the executioner, which allowed him to perform his job quicker and without pressure. Executioners were paid around 3,000 Reich marks a year for their jobs, and they did receive a bonus of 65 marks per execution, which was enough for one to buy a villa inside a rich suburb of Munich. Also, the Nazis even charged the families of those who they beheaded, and for every killing, an execution cost 300 Reich marks. Even a 12 penny cost of posting the invoice for the Nazis was demanded back from the condemned person's family. In around eight and a half years from when Hitler seized control, it's believed that 16,500 people were executed using the foul bile, and despite many believing it was a painless and efficient way to die, it was harrowing for many families to consider what happened to their loved ones. One Nazi doctor even claimed that a trip to the dentist was worse and more painful than the guillotine, but one of the most shocking executions performed in the Third Reich using the foul bile was of a 17-year-old boy named Herbert Hubener. He became the youngest person executed for resisting the Nazis, and he wrote pamphlets questioning them. In one he wrote, German boys, do you know the country without freedom, the country of terror and tyranny? Yes, you know it well, but you are afraid to talk about it. They have intimidated you to such an extent that you don't dare talk for fear of reprisals. Yes, you are right, it is Germany, Hitler Germany. Through their unscrupulous terror tactics against young and old men and women, they have succeeded in making you spineless puppets to do their bidding. He was arrested by the Gestapo and was tried as an adult, however despite being underaged, he was put to death. On the 27th of October 1942, hours after his death sentence was confirmed, at 8.13pm he was executed by the foul inside the execution room at Plotzensee Prison in Berlin. His last words to the judges were defiant and he said, Now I must die, even though I have committed no crime. So now it is my turn, but your turn will come. Shockingly, the foul bile was even at one point used following the war in the post-Hitler Germany and was allowed to be used by the Allied War Crimes Tribunals in post-war Germany. Those who were deemed sentenced to death by Allied War Crimes Tribunals were killed by hanging on gallows at prisons such as Landsberg and Hamlin, but they allowed the German courts to use the device if they sentenced someone to death. One was used by the British to execute people condemned under German law but it was inside the tough prisons of the Nazis and the Gestapo where the foul bile was mostly used in its deadly manner. The execution chambers all across occupied lands even had a foul bile. The one at Pankrak prison executed a hundred people during the German occupation of the land, and most of the victims were members of the Czech resistance. Despite it initially being a signal of freedom from the oppressive French monarchy during the revolution, 
the guillotine, when it was used inside of the Third Reich, stood for something completely different. It stood for persecution and keeping people down, who defied Hitler and his regime. Many of the former victims of the Faubile were considered heroes in the period following the war, and many were considered people who should have lived. The Faubile was a quick and efficient execution device, and within seconds someone could be killed on it. Often it took less than 10 seconds for someone's life to be over when they entered the execution chamber, and with this Hitler got what he wanted, their descent over quickly, with the fall of the axe blade. The Faubile is remembered today as Hitler's horrific execution device, that took the lives of over 16,000 people during his time in power. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.